just as I had promised before, uh, I will do um, some video for this channel concerning national cultural autonomy. And also, at some point, you know, as I had said before, a video of self-criticism, criticism of Dr. Weisfeld and criticism of Donna Newman. And yeah, I will be criticizing the federated MLM cadres. That will have to wait, though. Um, because first, before I do that, of course, I'd, I'm going to be doing the videos on the national cultural autonomy. But I've been paying close attention to the particular situation that Dr. Weisfeld is dealing with. So that is what I am going to be covering today as an update for you. So without further ado, here is Dr. Weisfeld speaking with Steve Struggle. Now, I had interviewed Steve Struggle for this channel um, before. And Steve Struggle was in the original Black Panther Party. It's come out, um, it's been, it's become more known to people that he was also in the Maoist internationalist movement. He is considered officially the representative of the old guard of Panther Code. Good morning to you, Steve. Good morning. Good morning to everyone. And a new day's coming, I, I believe. And uh, I think that we're uh, bringing it about. So, uh, yep, and, I agree. I agree. So, here we are. Um, I'm Dr. Abraham Weisfeld, uh, political scientist uh, in Montreal, Montreal, as we say here. And this is uh, introducing as well Steve Struggle of the Black Panthers in the uh, American Revolution scene. So here we go. Last week's video with uh, Ahmed, Abou uh, Ahmed was uh, 112 views on uh, the two uh, <clears throat> channels that it's uh, been featured on. So nice. I think that uh, 112 hardcore, you know, serious people can uh, can do whatever they want. <laughs> you know, I agree. This is uh, this is what we're we're doing, and and this is what we're making at the same time. Uh, I have some news to tell you, Steve. Uh, I've uh, <clears throat> I've had to uh, deal with the court here in Montreal right. because uh, I've been charged with a criminal mischief for having written the words "and a free Palestine" on an empty space in small but capital letters on a poster for the Israel Day Parade. Okay. Doctor Weisfeld looks a lot better with a beard, wouldn't you say? I should mention right now, before I forget, that there are three links in the description of this video. The first link will link you to Dr. Weisfeld's channel, Abraham Weisfeld PhD. The second link will link you to Steve Struggle's channel, Pantherism. And the third link will link you to Panther Power. And Panther Power is basically an archive representative channel which gives you somewhat of an idea of what the line of the old guard of Panther Code is. The idea of Panther Power was the was an idea which came straight from Captain Nine Millimeter. I should point that out. Anyway, let's get back to the conversation between Dr. Weisfeld the Jewish Bundist, and Steve Struggle, the Black Panther. So, you know, they decided that, you know, this is a criminal act, so it's a called criminal mischief, and uh, they're proceeding summarily. Uh, well, the first decision made by the Crown, the Crown Prosecutor, you know, we have a king here, so it's called a Crown Prosecutor. So they decided to go ahead with the charge. Now, the Crown Prosecutor is not going to drop the charge, they, which they could have, so that's one. So they're, they're into prosecuting me. Okay, fine. So secondly, they're proceeding summarily, which means they're not going to ask for a prison time, which is unlikely 
but it means that I can't get a jury, you know, like it's going to be up to a judge. And then they choose, you know, the, uh, the judge, you know, that uh, is going to hear the uh, case, <clears throat> the prosecution does so by, by setting the date and the time so they can choose the judge. So, uh, you know, this is uh, the problem. The second problem is that uh, in order to get out of detention when I was first arrested, I had to sign a paper saying that I wouldn't return to the Jewish Community Center. And I didn't know if it meant, you know, until the first hearing or, you know, until the whole process uh, is finished. So it seems uh, that this is a condition that's being imposed, you know, for uh, until there's a judgment, you know, like the whole process, you know, a year, year and a half, two years or whatever. So I can't accept that, you know, so I applied to have this condition uh, removed. And the uh, first day, you know, on the first appearance, you know, this uh, lawyer that was supposed to help me didn't do anything at all. He said that he was going to speak to the uh, prosecutor, which he didn't. So <clears throat> dumped, dumped uh, that initial help, which wasn't a help, got a hold of the prosecutor myself, asked the prosecutor to drop that uh, release condition, and the prosecutor has refused. So next step is that I've applied for a preliminary procedural hearing in order to hear my motion to uh, lift the uh, conditions uh, prohibiting me from going back to the Jewish Community Center. So I've sent that you know, to the court itself and not just to the prosecutor. So the court is supposed to take it up, you know, set a date for a hearing, and uh, they haven't done so. <laughs> so they don't even follow their own regulations, you know, their own procedures, because they, they don't want do. to let me, you know, uh, go back to the Jewish Community Center. You know, that's the whole point. You know, they don't want me to be part of the Jewish community, even though I'm Jewish. You know, they wanted to find, you know, like a Jewish person can only be a Zionist now, you know, like, so it's no longer a Jewish community. It's a Zionist community, according to to the prosecutor and according to the complainant and according to who knows what. So, you know, th that's what's happened this week. And the consequences is this, okay. So I've, you know, I'm enrolled, you know, to go to the annual general assembly of the Holocaust Museum, which I've been to before. And I've been to various meetings of the Holocaust survivors there at the Jewish Community Center as well, to which I was invited by a Holocaust survivor from Hungary, actually. And so if I go back to the Jewish Community Center, Steve, you know, they could arrest me, right? Right, right. Yeah. So I'm going to go back, see if they have the guts, you know, to arrest a second generation Holocaust survivor on the way to an annual general meeting assembly of the Holocaust Museum, you know, in the Jewish Community Center. If they do when that... Is this supposed to be? Well, what what day is this? What um what what day is this you're doing this? Uh September the twelfth. Okay, so we so we have some time. Okay. Yeah, so we've got three weeks for the court to to reply and say, Oh yeah, okay, fine. You know, you can have, you know, a preliminary hearing and we can hear your motion, all legally set up, you know, in legal format and everything. You know, and then a judge can say whether or not I should be barred from the Jewish Community Center. Okay. And I don't think any judge can reasonably ask me to, uh, you know, not go to the Jewish Community Center and to the Holocaust Museum when I'm a second generation Holocaust survivor. You know, if they do that, they bring themselves in the court into dis disrepute, discrediting the court itself. So I don't think they would. But in any case, you know, I have to go back to the Jewish Community Center on the 12th and then you know, see what they will do, you know, like I'm challenging them to arrest me, in other words. And if they do arrest me, my next court hearing is October the 30th. So that would be about a month and a half in prison. And then I would have a chance at the next court hearing to actually have the motion to dismiss the condition heard by a judge, you know, because I don't think the court's going to let me get a hearing to allow a judge to decide on the matter. So that's, you know, like what I'm... Uh, bound to do, you know, by conviction and, and by logic, you know, like I can't let them get away with anything like that. So the September the 12th is the deadline. And then uh, I'll probably be in prison until October the 30th. So, you know, in terms of Jewish tradition, you know, like 
September the 12th, you know what that means, you know, because September the 15th is uh, Rosh Hashanah, New Year's, you know, and you're supposed to be, you know, like, it's supposed to be good times. And then, you know, September the 25th is Yom Kippur, you know, the day of fasting, you know, when you're supposed to sort of, you know, beg for your life for the coming year from, from the deity, supposedly, you know, like, so, you know, not many, you know, like Jewish people still believe that, but, you know, to be in prison on Yom Kippur, you know, in uh, fasting, <laughs> well, in prison, you know, like Jewish community will not stand for this. Actually, among the most ill religious of Jewish people, Yom Kippur is taken extremely seriously. If you, and that's that's regardless of whether you believe in divinity or not, believe in divinity. Like you could believe in divinity and be extremely religiously observant, but you could believe in divinity and not be observant at all. You could also be super observant and not believe in divinity. You know, you gotta you gotta separate um, religiosity from theology sometimes to understand how people are. But anyway, uh, just a correction here: Yom Kippur is taken more seriously by Jewish people by the entire Jewish. A diaspora nation with of course certain ex exceptions but like the most ill religious or, or even some of the most um atheistic of jewish people tend to view yom kippur as the most important day see if you don't even believe in the the divinity the divine divinity or theity or hashem um it is a very important time for self-reflection and for you know us as jewish people to be accountable to each other uh, it's also important to read that 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 the book of Jonah is read uh, because it it shows you that uh, sacrifices have nothing to do with our atonements, um, and that's why we fast. Uh, in the book of Jonah, uh, Jonah goes to uh, the city of Nineveh of uh, Syria and uh, pretty much tells them to repent, and they do, much to his dismay, and then he's angry about it. A lot of Jewish people who understand what the Torah culture is all about find themselves a lot in that same position. Um, so I just feel like I need to make that uh, correction, as it was asked of me to make this correction a couple times. And so that they're just for the record, Dr. Weisfeld uh, fasts every Yom Kippur, and he also fasts on Ramadan in solidarity with the Muslims. Very important that I should point that out. And I, I'm very upset that it's highly unlikely that Dr. Weisfeld won't be a arrested. A lot of us are very upset by this. Um, you can tell Steve Struggle's a bit upset, but he's definitely in support of Dr. Weisfeld's convictions. The same is true with me. i am in support of Dr. Weisfeld's convictions, although I, I think that this is tactically dangerous. However, Dr. Weisfeld's strategies have been known to work, as crazy as they may seem. There is some sort of genius behind how he approaches this situation and i'm not very happy that he will not be doing yom kippur in the safety of his own surroundings this very makes me this makes me very upset anyway um we're going to proceed with this conversation between dr weisfeld the jewish bundist and steve struggle the black panther you know I want the Jewish community to revolt. I want the Jewish community to stand up and say to the Zionist, you know, machers and leaders that are manipulating this whole condition to, you know, get lost and let, you know, Dr. Abraham Weisfeld free. So this is, you know, the way it's going to play out. I think that's what's going to be happening. I don't see, you know, the court, you know, letting me off on this. I'm going to be going in on September the 12th and then challenging them, you know, to, uh, uh, you know, back off. And uh, let a Jewish person, you know, be Jewish and not a Zionist. That's about what it is all about. Yeah. Well, I've already won the uh, initial case, you know, the book, you know, my book was banned, you know, from the Jewish public library, you know, by this librarian who made the uh, complaint in the first place. And it turned out that the, uh, the administration of the Jewish public library had not known what this librarian at the circulation desk, you know, was doing. She just did it on her own, you know, because she's a Zionist and she thinks that she's, you know, obeying a higher authority, which is 
the Zionist lobby, you know, the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs here in Canada. It's like APAC. So, you know, if the uh, higher ups, you know, want to, you know, let this, you know, roll out as it's going to be rolling out, you know, then fine, you know, they're going to suffer the consequences. And then we're going to have to have a, an accounting afterwards. I can call a Jewish court, Kahila. I can call on the Canadian Jewish Congress to be convened, you know, in plenary to discuss this matter as well. You know, these are sort of legal avenues within the Jewish community that I can pursue as well that I intend to. But they tried to shut down the Canadian Jewish Congress because it's democratic. Any Jewish person can come there registering vote. You know, like it's totally open. So it's like direct democracy there. And But they shut that down and they replaced it with the uh, Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs because they cut off the money to the Canadian Jewish Congress and they gave it to the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs. It's a total manipulation. It's like a dictatorship. <laughs> and it's like this state of Israel, the Zionist state of Israel, operating here inside Montreal, you know, within the Jewish community, as if, you know, they're governing the Jewish community, as if they're the government of the Jewish community here in Montreal, even though we don't have a vote. <laughs> you know, this is the whole Zionist trip. That's what it's all about. Well, who is going? It, 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 my, um, who is going to go with you to the um, the community center next month? I'm not sure yet. There has to be some people who come there and uh, and put it on camera and record it. It has to go on a recording. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would highly suggest that. I, I I would suggest that you have to have people go with you. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But the Palestinians yeah. are are afraid to go there, you know, because. You know, if Palestinians, you know, go to the Jewish community center, even on the sidewalk in front of the place, you know, the police will find some way to arrest them. <laughs> They're going to be like removed, you know, as quickly as possible. You know, that's, uh, and then they, of course, you know, there's an Israel flag flying in front of the place as well, <laughs> together with the Quebec and Canadian flags. <laughs> well, you know, like who decided to put that up there? Not me. You know. It's all a dictatorial practice here that's being inflicted on me. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I agree. Well, um, um, what do you? I mean, what do you think is behind all this? Why? Why were you banned from the center? That seems to be the main issue here. Yeah, they're upset. You know, like I've been going to the center, you know, like many times over the years. But this time, you know, like I was just coming out of a Holocaust survivors meeting to which I was invited. You know, a Holocaust survivor invited me to come to the meeting. You know, and, you know, they, of course, you know, like I get to meet people there. They get to know me. They get to know that I'm, you know, like, like, you know, super Jewish, you know, like and all this, you know, like I've been speak Yiddish. And so they can't deny that I'm Yiddish. Uh, that I'm Jewish, but they're trying to say that I'm not Jewish because I'm not a Zionist, you know, so this contradiction becomes evident, you know, it becomes apparent to everybody in there. So they want to stop me from coming back, you know, because, you know, I was actually invited into the survivors meeting. You have to be invited into it, you know, because it's like not a public meeting. So, you know, they have to stop me somehow. And uh, they're using this as an excuse to do it. And they, you know, like, they even tried to get rid of my book in the Jewish Public Library. But uh, the book is there now, you know, it was brought back because I, uh, you know, threatened to uh, charge whoever was holding the book with theft, which is what it was, you know, like the book was taken from the library. If you steal a book from the library, you know, without, you know, signing it out, without the intention of bringing it back, you know, they charge you with theft. Well... In this case, you know, the police were holding the book. <laughs> so the police were guilty of theft, you know, so they had to bring it back to the library. You know, it's now listed in the catalog there. So that's that, you know, for for the book. And uh, so that case is one, you know, I hope to win the, the rest of the uh, case issues as well. And if not, you know, like then I'll stick it out in prison. You know, I've done prison before. I've even done a hunger strike in prison before when I was in prison in Ottawa against the U.S. cruise missile being tested well, in Canada. Let me ask you this. How would the, how would the prison sentence affect your status in 
in Canada? Nothing. No effect whatsoever. I already have a prison record. The the only no, effect no, that... I'm, I mean I'm, I mean, okay, your status in Canada, could it be revoked and you'd be deported because of that? No, I'm a citizen. I was born in Toronto. Just I was conceived okay, in a right. refugee right. camp in, in the in American Germany, you know, after the war at the Wetzlar refugee camp. But I was born in Toronto. So I, I'm okay. I'm kosher there. But okay, uh, okay, well, my important. prison record has kept me out of the United States. I'm banned from the U.S. of A. You know, I can't get in there. Even if I go and try to get in there, you know, if, I'm, if I step on American territory, they can put me in prison for 30 days because, you know, that's the law. So that's the only effect. Now, uh, you know, the effect that it may have on me getting back into uh, Palestine, Israel, uh, that's another question, Yes. I have to defeat this, you know, in order to uh, not enable them, you know, to be able to deny, well, deny me entry there. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Right now, can you be denied entry into Palestine? No, no, no. Okay. You can't deny, deny me entry. But the last time, they only gave me a visa for a month. Usually, they give a tourist a visa for three months. Last time, they only gave me a visa for one month. Well, let me ask you this then. To, to... Weighing, weighing the long term situation, is it is it beneficial to lose access to Palestine over access to the Jewish Community Center? I think that's something that you have to consider. Because I've if, it. I have a okay, strategy. okay, I, I got a strategy, Steve. <laughs> got it. Okay. Because you know I can always apply for Israeli citizenship, and then they can't what? stop me from coming in. But they can't do, do, stop do, me from going, staying there more than three months. Okay. Do 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 they have to grant you this? Do they have to grant you citizenship? I uh, yes, except for you see the right of return for Jewish people to you know the state of Israel is right. basic law there. You know, like every right. Jew, you know, like supposedly you know can, can know. apply for yeah. get citizenship. Okay, no All Palestinians. Right. You know, like. <laughs> okay but you know but there's a little sort of you know clause in that paragraph which says unless the person is a threat to the security of the state of israel so um for those that, are, that might be confused dr weisfeld does not actually support the existence of the state of israel he recognizes it on the terms that it is recognized by the un um and he is for a no-state solution. Um, same with me. Same with Donna Newman. Uh, that's the same with the five other Bundists that are no longer with us, as well as other Bundist formations that have adopted the positions that were taken by the Jewish Bundist diaspora movement. So a lot of us are very critical of the strategy that Dr. Weisfeld is attempting with maybe it will work because like i said before there's a certain genius behind dr weisfeld that you know there's been times i thought that his ideas would not work and that they just did anyway however the concern is is that dr weisfeld's more known than he was before and there's a you know there does seem to be a political prejudice being launched against him i would really ask that those that see this video share it on various forms of social media keep sharing it make a big deal about this because this is this is not getting as known as it should the the it, i mean it's so minuscule writing and a free palestine on a, a cardboard sign basically this is this is this is insane i mean you know, he's not even, I mean, a vandalism charge shouldn't have prison time to it, you know, and, and, and like a, such a menace to a sign. It's just, this is an obvious calculated effort to destroy Dr. Weisfeld or to shut him down or like, this is really annoying that this is even happening at all. And I had spoken to Jason Unruh recently and he is still baffled that such a case against him could even exist. 
So, you know, the Jewish people do need a revolt. My question is, where the hell is Jewish Voice for Peace? I guess J Street isn't going to care because Dr. Weisfeld is a, a, an anti-Zionist and J Street is liberal Zionist. You know, um, I could ask the question, where is the, uh, what was it, the, the, the International Jewish Anti-Zionist League? I think that's what it's called. Where are they? Where are all the faux, small, liberal, fake Bundist groups? Where are they? This is getting very obvious that people like the struggle, but they don't like solutions. And Dr. Weisfeld, you know, helped contribute to solutions. He's recognized by Palestinians in Nablus as a Palestinian. And Jewish Palestinians are not a new phenomenon. Unlike Israelis, which are artificial, you know, in, in settlers, basically, Jewish Palestinians are an organic thing. And, you know, I get a fact for everybody here. Did you know that Ashkenazi DNA has a lot of similarities to Palestinian DNA? In fact, there's a lot less DNA similarity with Sephardi and Palestinian. I know that that's hard for people to understand, but, you know, I've always said, being that I am Sephardi, that Sephardim, while some of us have the Hebrew blood, most of us really don't. The Hebrew blood is to be found more in the Misrahim and the Ashkenazim. But like this, this really needs to be more covered. You know, it's very frustrating that Press TV, RT, Al Jazeera, they haven't picked this up. Democracy Now! is sure not going to pick this up. Amy Goodman doesn't care about Jewish issues. That's a fact about her. Otherwise, she would have interviewed Nichiri Karta. And while Al Jazeera, RT, and Press TV have interviewed Nichiri Karta, Nichiri Karta are, there's many of them. Dr. Weisfeld um, is responsible for the resurrection of Bundism. All I did was help to publicize it. All Donna Newman did was really just flush out theories, you know, that would synthesize it to be more acceptable, you know, and when you read the manual parts one and two, you're going to realize that, okay, well, you know, everybody was really just in support of Dr. Weisfeld. Like, even in our disagreements with Dr. Weisfeld, we're in support of Dr. Weisfeld. Like, this cannot... I, I'm, I'm angry that this is even, you know, being tolerated. Why is it tolerated that a Jewish man who is a second-generation Holocaust survivor... Uh, you know, it can't go to a, a hol you know, like a Jewish center. You can't go to a Holocaust museum. Like this is, this is a, this is like, I, I don't have words. I'm, let's proceed. It's just, this is just, be, share the video. I'm asking people to share this video everywhere. If you have Twitter, share it on Twitter. If you're on Facebook, share it on Facebook. Share it everywhere. Share it, uh, link it to people in your phones because now in this crazy age, we can watch YouTube on our phones and stuff. Share the video, okay? Okay. If they want have to declare you? me, 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 you know, a threat right. to the security of the state of Israel, well, you know, like I'll honorably you know wear that title but you know they can't prove it you know i'll take them to court so you know like yeah. it's turning into what's called a big megillah <laughs> a big deal okay well how how soon can you begin that process uh as soon as Reason, I... I'm, I'm, I'm saying that because if the court proceeding could prevent that from going forward yeah. but you start before the court proceeding then maybe you have well, you have one 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 leg up on them. Also, my question is, can you get a continuance on September twelfth? Can you get it delayed? Uh, no, because it's the annual general assembly of the Holocaust no, no, Museum. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm wrong. Can you get the court hearing delayed? Uh, I, I'm trying to get a court hearing before the twelfth so that I can get the condition struck down. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Which I doubt they're okay. going to give me, you know, because, you know, courts, you know, they take like a month to decide anything. You know, like every little stick takes a month and maybe more. So, you know, like they're incompetent. 
And also they don't have enough staff, not enough judges, you know, because they don't have enough funding. Court system, healthcare system, you know, everything is underfunded. And uh, housing, you know, everything. So, uh, you know, okay, let them shaft themselves. You know, they're putting themselves into uh, an impossible situation. So it's, it's, it's not me that they're attacking. They're going to end up, you know, like undermining themselves as far as I'm concerned. Now, if, I, you know, like I'm in, I'm in prison and I go to court, you know, the, 20, uh, the 30th of October, as has been set up already. There, you know, like the judge can hear the, uh, the motion to lift the condition. So I don't have to go back to prison. Okay, now, if the judge doesn't lift the condition, and I do go back to prison, what do I do then, right? The only alternative yeah. at that point, you know, the Palestinians are on a hunger strike now. You know, there's 5,000 Palestinian prisoners, you know, uh, about 1,000 of them are there, you know, without even any charge, you know, called administrative detention under the British colonial rule law, same law. Okay. So they're going on a hunger strike, you know, to protest their detention and the conditions of their detention. So you know, like after the 30th, if I'm still in prison, then I would simply join their hunger strike. And then, you know, like they I challenge them to lift the condition or the hunger strike continues. That's the way. They have you, have you written this anywhere? And have you written about this anywhere? Has it been shared in any publications? Not all of it, no. Okay. You know, are there, are there any are there any journals, um, websites, um, are there any venues where you can write write what's occurring to spread the word? Yes, I've. Uh, you know the the the, the motions. You know the uh, the notice of motions that I've. Uh, written up to uh, cancel the condition of release so that I can go back to the Jewish Community Center, together with two other motions, I've uh, sent out, you know, to everything that I have, you know, all the email addresses, all the Facebook groups that I have access to, uh, and all the media that I have access to. And you know what? I got no reply from any media, none. You know, there's this... A, a publication in Canada called the Canadian Jewish News, you know, and they're supposed to be covering Jewish news. But what about RT? on their website, what, 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 okay, okay. But on their website, they even call themselves Zionist publication, you know. So, yeah, well, okay. You know, they shouldn't be calling Maybe, themselves yeah. Canadian Jewish News. They should be calling themselves the Canadian Zionist News, you know. But they have not called that. No. What about Al language, what, uh, what about here. what about Al Jazeera? Al Jazeera, um, um, yeah. Press TV, R RT, yeah, yeah. TV, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, them? I sent them all the emails, you know, they all ignore me. But don't you and I have a, don't we have a, a Press TV correspondent as a common friend? Yeah. I think we do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and, and he's, so he's contacted that, them. Yeah, okay, good, all right, very good, yeah. He has, he has. Okay, he, okay. He very good, tried. okay. Very good. Okay. Well, I just want to, I just want to make sure you get some press coverage here. Yeah. This is very important. This is very important. Uh, what else? If they don't, uh, if the press doesn't come through, even the, uh, you know, third world press doesn't come through, progressives and all that, they don't yeah. come through. Yeah. Then, you know, I continue. You know, I just continue. Right. Oh, yeah. No, then, no. You I'm, know, no. Eventually, they get exposed as you know not willing to, to cover. You know, like a. Right. Yeah. Well, well that's kind of what they, that's kind of what they need to be exposed as because right now, right now, my con main concern strategically is the coverage of the story because I think that could positively positively impact the outcome, and because it seems to me that there's a number of angles um, that could be used to expose and, and inform and mobilize people to, for your defense, um, including letters to the judge, um, coming to the hearing with you, mm -hmm. uh, contacting the Canadian government in particular, and also the Jewish Community Center to take to, re to, re to, to demand that they stop the banning of you from the meeting. Yeah. It seems to me if, if they if they simply say this is okay, 
we will drop this banning of the device fail. Then the whole thing goes away. Yeah, that's right. That, yeah. seems, that seems to be the main thing that I hear is if 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 the community center is saying that you must be banned or you are banned, then the community center can say you're not banned. Yeah. It's kind of like it's very it's very easy. Yeah. It's not, it's not like it's a court issue. The court issue comes into in, in, in impact because of the community center. Yeah. So to me, if, if we had if, if we even have 500 phone calls or 50 phone calls next week to the community center from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., five phone calls an hour for five days, and and letters and emails to their websites mm. demanding this, then I think we're mobilizing supporters to do what they could do from the comfort of their homes, their apartments, or even their cell phones. Yeah, I'm just seeing a way we can make mobilize people to the community center to simply remove the ban. That's yeah. all they have to do, and then the whole thing goes away. Yeah, it, it, to me, I mean, because since they're the they're the they're the they are the source from which the, the criminal justice system is attacking you. Yeah, that's my that's my view. Anyway, I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, the higher ups, you know, will. Uh... It's not going to be the librarian who decides, you know, uh, to, to call the police on me on the September the 12th. It's going to be, you know, somebody responsible at the uh, Holocaust Museum or maybe a security guard at the front desk. But uh, well, I, I, I think we have to I think we need to, we need to lay out if my suggestion is a good strategy, if not, what is another strategy and, and get people mobilized during the next three weeks. Because we have time to get people mobilized, and yeah. right now we're not mobilizing anybody. Well, so we need to mobilize. I mean, in the sense of between you and me and the lips, people who listen to this, who listen to this program, people who were listening last week, we need to get them yeah. mobilized to support you. Yeah. If they're mobilized to support you, then we can have an impact, even though we're not in Canada with you. Yeah. Well. You know, the, my friend, you know, who's a survivor from Hungary, he spoke to the higher ups there and told them, you know, like, ask them, you know, why this is happening. And they gave him all sorts of excuses, which he repeated to me. So it sort of, you know, indicates that the, the higher ups are going to let this, you know, happen. They're going to let me get arrested. Yes, yes. Steve Struggle has the right idea. We need to mobilize support for Dr. Weisfeld. Currently, my Bundist unit is down to me and one other person as it began due to sabotage by somebody by the name of Dovid Mavaritz. I had at least 11, 11 Jewish Caribbeans on my side with, you know, mobilizing for protest and anti-fascist action. Um, I have decided to share that with you now. Um, I'm regathering forces as best I can, but, you know, there's... There's a lot of sabotage towards Bundism because it's popular again. Now, people can say, oh, no, it's a thing of the past. No, it's actually popular again. And it wouldn't be popular again without Dr. Weisfeld. And I am absolutely convinced that that is why this is happening to him. So we need to mobilize support for Dr. Weisfeld. Steve Struggle has the right idea. And I, I, I agree with that. I'm going to be honest. I agree. I want to go on the record that I do not exactly hold the position that the chairman of the revolution, Dr. Weisfeld, holds. I actually share the position that Steve Struggle holds. But like Steve Struggle, I'm going to back work you know, Dr. Weisfeld's wishes based on what he, his, his logic and his convictions. And, you know, they've served him well in the past. The concern that many of us have is it's not the same as it was before. People understand who Dr. Weisfeld is. It's coming out that the more he's been censored, the more he's been picked up by radicals in the far left, such as Marxist Leninist Maoists, homeless anarchists that will literally fight the cops. Uh, criminalized labor unions. Yes, there's criminalized labor. Yeah, AB, Dr. Weisfeld, when you see this, I want you to know 
There are criminalized labor unions in Mexico that support you. Very hard to get in touch with. And you can get in touch with Mexico, so you should seek them out as, you know, what I'm talking about. Like, if you look around, there's all this support for Dr. Weisfeld. The funny thing is, is what is being noticed is that those that support Dr. Weisfeld tend to be just as marginalized as Dr. Weisfeld himself. And when the marginalized come together, we become powerful. And that is why they're doing this to Dr. Weisfeld. That is why they are scared of Dr. Weisfeld. I repeat, the Canadian government itself is scared of Dr. Weisfeld. Now, AB man, I love you. And you may think that I'm doing the hyperbole thing again, but like, no, like, this is kind of transparent what's going on. And of course, Dr. Weisfeld will gladly wear the title if he's, uh, if they, he's considered a threat to the state of Israel, even though he's not really a threat to mo much of anybody, unless changing the hearts of men, men and women to think correctly about different things is the threat. He's definitely no physical threat, that's for sure. Yeah, he'll fight back if he's attacked, you know, because we are, as Jewish people, we are non-aggressive. We're not non-violent. But, you know, he's not really violent. And he's not, he doesn't, he, he never attacks without pro pro you know, provocation. Like, he, he's, Dr. Weisfeld has often had uh, held us back from being more aggressive on things. You can't possibly say that he's a threat in any physical matter. The simple truth is Zionism is imploding all, you know, the, the ideology is falling apart. Everybody knows it, and Dr. Weisfeld is basically undeclared but indicted anyway by Zionists worldwide as the one of the greatest threats, and they 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 don't want to say that openly. So that's what why this is happening. Okay, we're going to continue with this again. Share this with everybody. Share this video with people, and let's mobilize a protest for Dr. Weisfeld. I can't do this by myself. <sighs> Even when I had five friends that, you know, really pumped their stuff into a greater Bundist theory, we were not enough. There, there needs to be a lot more attention on this. And because Bundism is back for all young Jewish people out there, you should know that the Bund that you're looking into wouldn't exist without this man. Well, Detained, well you know, because... but that can, that, that can change. That could change. Yes. Even though your even though your friend's conversation wasn't successful, yeah. If we can if we continue to mobilize people and to demand this this happen, if we don't demand it, it won't change. If we do demand it, it could change. Yeah. So that's that's an idea I have is to yeah. start a campaign uh, in your behalf on that center and to tell them that we want these charges dropped. We want this ban dropped. With yeah. the band drop, there's no need for any kind of. With the band drop, that gives less less rationale for the court to even mess with you. Yeah. The band is dropped. The band is dropped. Why am I in front of you, Judge? Yeah. Well, we we have and, a, anyway. We have something of a of a of a an association here. You know, like we're called the Alliance of Concerned Jewish Canadians, and you know the members. You know they they could intervene here. You know, like uh, yeah. <sighs> Well, like, they, I, I think they, I think they must intervene. If yeah. they don't intervene, the chance to succeed to me, I have a different perspective. I don't want you going to prison. I, I you know, I don't want you inside the in the, the prison system because any anything can happen to you there. You're well, outside the prison system, but yeah. no, anything, but anything can happen to you in prison once you're in there. Yes, because they I can mean, set you up. You know, like it, they, you know, right. pay somebody. You know, to to. To rough or, you up, you know, that sort of thing. Or, yeah. or, or, or just your, but let's say that, I mean, there are many things that, that they can have somebody assault you, they can have somebody murder you, that your your health could take a um, turn for the worse just being inside. Your health could take a turn for the worse. So I'm always the person to avoid people going to jail and prison. Yeah. I avoid that at all costs. And once you're in there, you have no control. When you're outside, you have much more control. Yeah. So that's kind of that's kind of how I see. For example, um, there was a demonstration, some demonstrations this week against against some racists who are now anti homosexual activists who are claiming that kids are being groomed in school by teachers. And this is a real uh, sick yeah. movement. It's a very sick movement. Yeah. And um, so people had a demonstration against them in LA and then the cops beat them up. Uh, now, 
I'm of the view, if I know the cops are here to beat me up, I'm not going to do nothing that the cops beat me up. I, I will retreat tactically, let the cops have the street. Why? I don't want to be beat up. Yeah. I don't, I'm not going to have no, I'm not going down. I'm going to have a conversation with the cops. Why? Why? I'm going to lose. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying the situation, with, and now people have their criminal charges, they have to go to court. I'm not saying they did anything wrong demonstrating. No, no. But if you see the cops are going to attack you, just retreat. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just saying your situation, if we can keep you out of prison, to me, that's what we want to do. That's just my view. Is your is your, is your individual situation, and I know you have you have to take a political stance. I want to do what I can to keep you from going to jail. That's just me. Yeah, the jail is it's just not a fun place. I'm sorry. Yeah, like, <laughs> no. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm just not going to let this happen. But no, to, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm not saying you should. No, no, yeah. I'm not. No, uh, no, I'm not saying. Uh, I am doing you know what I can. You know, legally, you know, like I've made all the submissions yeah. and everything like that. You, you know, sure like, have. Sure, you yeah, sure have. Could be. You a, sure could have. This, yeah. You know, like. But right. I've been in prison before. You know, I've been in prison for the cruise missile. I've been in prison for trafficking, you know, in order to survive, you know, here at our cultural center, even though it's legal now here in Canada, you know, like I did three months there, you know, for that. And, uh, you know, I've been in prison in Toronto too. You know, I've been in prison in Toronto, Ottawa and Montreal, you know, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh, and uh, you know, I keep in shape, you know. So if anybody wants to try to pick on me, you know, like they're going to get hurt. <laughs> you know, that's so. You know, uh, I've got that uh, taken into consideration there. Uh, we've only okay. got a couple right. of minutes here, you know. But uh, okay. right. tell me, you know, like uh, what you've been up to, and you know, what's happening, and what uh, what's you know, like the thing. With well, you. well, I we know as far as the Niger situation. Yeah. Um, the, the French, some French envoys have been asked to leave, and the anti the anti francophone movement is continuing. Um, so far, there's been no invasion yet, so that's a good thing, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, the, um, and I just want I just want to say the issue of the new government there really has to be determined by the masses of the Nigerians. Yeah. Right now, they're immobilized to join the army. But yeah. are they mobilize? Are they mobilizing their political and economic orientation to demand to to to, to demand that the government take certain stances to serve their interests? I'm I'm not coming out against the government. I'm just saying, for this to work in the interest of the Nigerians, either even under a capitalist framework, Nigerian masses have to be heard. I'm not saying they're not being heard. Yeah. But I just I want to just caution people that the outs with the French is historically a good thing, but if if the Americans take their place, it's not going to be any better. Yeah, yeah. No, well, and it, it won't be. I mean, it, but that's up to that's up to the Nigerians to figure out, not yeah. me. Well, I read this morning that seventy thousand Nigerians have volunteered, you know, for military defense oh, yeah. of the country. They're on maximum military alert now, so they're expecting an attack yeah. or something. And they've expelled, you know, the uh, the um, the French ambassador. You know, is gone. You know, like well, they should have been gone a long time ago. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, I mean, French, the French, the French are like the Belgians. They're yeah. the most brutal. The most the Belgians and the Germans and the French. You know, they, they have the most brutal type of rule. The most, yeah. I mean, really sick. I'm, I'm not saying the English, the English were better. No, I'm not saying the English were better. But mm -hmm. the Belgians and the the Belgians and the French have this really kind of sordid, despicable history. Yeah. And with the francophone money situation and all the stuff that's going on with post-colonial uh, France and Af French colonies in Africa, you know, let's the BRICS summit does something for them. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the BRICS summit. No, it, the BRICS summit has to be something for the uh, the the forcibly underdeveloped world, and these these countries are forcibly underdeveloped. They were intentionally not developed by France. Yeah, I mean, it's really it's really bad. I mean, it's, it's not good. It's kind of like it's kind of like the reservations in many ways. Yeah, yeah. In the United States, so the native people turn to gambling, to gambling to make money from non-natives to provide jobs for native people. I mean that's what they quote had to turn to, because the way the way the whole question was settled in the United States, well here's some land, good luck, 
and get the blank out, you know, that kind of thing. Uh -huh. So if if the BRICS summit is gonna, really going to be about something, it can't be, I mean, I'm not knocking per se BRICS. I'm not. But what will be the benefit for the working class and the poor and the farmers and those living in the desert? What can we do to demobilize the um, Islamists who are just, you know, I mean, that's just some nonsense there that they're, that they're throwing down. Hmm. You know, young young men and women with the gun. That's all that is. I mean, come on. The, 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 they're in poverty. They chew the way out because of, a, of, the, of, the, of, the, of how they interpret yeah. the Quran. So I'm just hoping that the BRICS movement will have some real impact positively for the working class and the poor. Time will tell. Yeah. Loans, loans to countries are not going to help them. Yeah. I don't care from the BRICS Bank or the World Bank. A loan, yeah. you have to pay the loan back. Yeah. So, you know, the whole world has to look at forcible underdevelopment. Hmm. That's what's happening in, in, in many communities or, yeah. force, or forcible ignorance. Yeah. From poverty, from poverty can come. I, I don't mean stupidity. I mean lack of development of mental faculties to critically think and come to solutions. That's what I mean by ignorance. Yeah. Okay. The drugs, the trafficking, all that stuff comes from forcible underdevelopment. It's it's really sad. Yeah. So you know, so let, let's let's just hope that something good can come out of the BRICS summit. Uh, I'm just gonna wait and see. I'm just gonna you know, but creating a new bank to crap the challenge the World Bank in in of itself is simply setting up a pill a, a dual a dual power pillar. And the thing about it is. Abraham, mm -hmm. the black people, the black people in Brazil, the native people in Brazil, the black people in the United States, in Canada, in Germany, in France, we cannot go to the BRICS summit because we are French and American and Brazilians. That's something that needs to change. Mm -hmm. if, if the native people of the U.S. want to go, they have to be accepted as, as, um, as, as um, genuine nations of people. Yeah. Right now, our right now our citizenship, our citizenship. Well, I, I think the I think the native people can pull it off, I, because they have they they have identity cards that make them demonstrate their members of of, of another nation. Mm -hmm. Blacks, the the natives in Brazil, mm -hmm. you know, in France, Germany, UK. We can't do anything mm -hmm. because because we're citizens of these countries. Yeah. It's and that absolutely. that really mess that messes up our political uh, our our political clout internationally is damaged because of that yeah i yeah. I, I thought about that recently like you know yeah. just it's something that we have to address because we can't go to no conferences we're america yeah. america's not allowed you know, well, you know what the fuck you know yeah i don't know yeah. just, I, it, see it, that. just yeah, somebody, yeah, I understand yeah. yeah there should be an international with a black nation representation as well as yeah. the other uh, min uh, national minorities you know in the world there's and, three thousand nations in the world and 193 <laughs> nation states you know, so uh, yeah, so yeah. I mean, the the folks from the Amazon, yeah. the folks from the Amazon, you have successful status. Yes, they should. Come on, yeah. Just just and, and because they're Brazilians, they don't have any status. I mean, I'm gonna say status to sit on, to sit in bodies, to make to have their their people's needs addressed and resolutions and um, solutions proposed on the international on the international yeah. scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just, it's just a problem. It's a problem. I, I, I just want to share to people who are listening that these, these, these oppressed communities cannot go to international bodies because they're citizens of another country. So a, a black, a black American group could not go to the African Forum in in, in Russia. We're we're African American, but we could not go to talk about the needs of African Americans because we're not a nation. Mm. We're not an African. Na we're not an African nation. The yeah, African this, this, Union, this, this, the African Union yeah. should have representation from the Black Nation of the USA. They sure should. They sure. They yeah. sure should. They, they sh and and for blacks in Brazil, blacks in France, blacks in Germany, oh. blacks in blacks in Brazil, uh, because we were brought from Africa through the slave trade, and yeah. we have no nation. We can say we can't go home to no nation. We, no, we cannot. There's no nation. The people, the people from Poland go back to Poland. I mean, they have a Polish connection. Yeah. These, these nations, France, you know, France and Francophone Africa, England from West Africa, probably Black American. But we have no, we have no right of return anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm just saying, 
I'm just saying these organizations like BRICS, these conferences, um, black people of color who have a history of being a victim of slavery or theft of land and genocide have no status in that. With the, with if that could change, people like me, you, others could go to this fora and start making our demands known. But right now, we're locked out because of our citizenship. At least me, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. I mean, it's, it's just something I just want to share. It's just something I want, I want people to think about. That's all. Right on. Okay, that's probably the end of our minutes. You know, for this week. So okay, brother. Thank you. Okay, until next week, then, Steve. Great. Until next week. Talk to you. Thank you. And you know what we are looking at and what we've been seeing through this whole thing, this is a thing that, um, by the way, for people who don't know, I actually know Comrade Shabazz X of Black Nation. Black Nation is a, a black, an all-black demarchist group for black national cultural autonomy. Uh, some people may have heard Jason Unruh reference this group. But um, me and... Comrade Shabazz X, we, we used to talk about the Black Jewish connection. And what you're seeing here with this conversation with Steve Struggle and Dr. Weisfeld, you're looking at the Black Jewish connection. Uh, anyway, I, I'm not going to use more words. I don't want to be super wordy. Um, in retrospect, I've been super wordy in the past, and I may have been super wordy for this video. I hope not that the thing is just, please spread this video out like share this video with everyone let it be known what's going on here and in regards i guess i have one thing to say down with zionism long live judaism long live jewishness long live the interfaith city of jerusalem long live palestine down with Zionism, down with the Zionist state. Israel is the name of the entire Jewish diaspora nation. It is not the name of any country. The kingdom of Israel has been gone for a very long time. It's time to... It's time to promote, you know, a better world. And for that better world to exist, we need to see the end of Zionism. If Israel... The state of Israel is to justify itself, then it needs to recognize... The state of Palestine. If it cannot recognize the state of Palestine, then the state of Israel really just has already discredited, which it has. The state of Israel has discredited itself. You can't be penalized for saying free Palestine unless, unless it's time that the Western governments just openly admit their totalitarian nature and stop hiding it. I guess... They would have to deal with their overprivileged citizens. You know, that's the thing in the first world. You don't want to clamp down too much on your overprivileged citizens because then they might push back. But this does show that empires fall. And what's happening is Zionism is falling. You know, BRICS is a great example of Western power falling. I'm not necessarily saying that I favor BRICS or anything like that. that my opinion wouldn't be much for this video, but, you know... Bricks is a sign of the times. Americanism and Zionism are falling apart. The Western imperialists have to now contend with Eurasian powers that they don't know how to deal with. I mean, let's be honest. The United States of America does not know how to deal with China or Russia at this point. So anyway, Ma'asalama, adio, farewell. Share the video, please.